experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. Mm -hmm. So every time something happens to you in life and it's less than perfect, and now I know that. And you just move on with that new knowledge. I'm Amy. I'm April. Certified sex educators, sexperts of the year, and best-selling authors. And we're on a mission to help you have more spicy, connected, and amazing shameless sex. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Shameless, shameless sex, revolution. sex Revolution. We're so close, it's like we have our own language. We're making sex and relationships shameless. To learn more, go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Happy anal August. That's right. It's it? anal August. I almost forget what day it is all the time. Well, it's August now. So you and we're need... actually recording this in August. I know. Which is rare. So you don't really need to know the day, actually. It's just August, which is fine. That's pretty cool. Well, I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, and we recorded this episode today. I'm happy to be here with you, too. And uh, we told, yeah, we it's fun when you record the episode the day of. And you, you'll hear more about the episode, but it's butt stuff, y'all. This episode is called Butt Jam Worthy. You're Which like, you and Dixie what? kind of create. Did she recreate it? And then you want to, or did you? So she, she came up with Butt Jam, and I said Butt Jam Worthy. And then she's like, that's the title. And Butt Jam is something that you'll hear about if you listen to the episode that we will have a, a butt sex a playlist that it's you can be a part of. not jamming anything in the butt, by the way. Uh, what's that, Joe? What's the difference between jam and jelly? Yeah. I can't jelly my dick in your ass. Ooh. But you can jam it in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. You don't the, want to. Thank though. you for that follow up. <laughs> with a lot of lube, and let's not do that only with consent. Um, body might tell us how to tell that joke. Body or Dixie? I mean, body storytelling, <laughs> Dixie. Dixie's Dixie. body storytelling. She gives us pointers. Yeah. So we, yeah, we tell our stories, and she teaches us about erotic storytelling. And there's so much there. It's like part therapy, part public speaking, part talking about sex. It's like all these different skills and highly fun and entertaining. I ate some nuts, so I'm working through that. She ate some nuts. Uh, almonds, just almonds, not some April, actual stop nuts. eating nuts before the butt worthy I know, jam. And, <laughs> no, I'm like, I want to say something, but I have an almond in my back of my throat. Uh, okay, um, well then we'll move on. Uh, Can you okay. jam your almond in the back of my throat? That sounds painful. I know. Uh, also, it needs a stopper. Anyways, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, just want to give a shout out to uh, someone that came to, I, I can't remember if it is Portland or Chicago, but you- Chicago. Chicago. I know who you're going to talk about. We signed his hat. Yeah, we signed your hat and you came and you bought us gifts from our Amazon wish list and you handed them to us in person, especially that external hard drive that we've been needing. Thank you we for that. We needed it so much yes. and Amy's been so excited about it. I was like, I love this external hard drive. Like, I don't know if you know this yet. But that external hard drive like, so is nerdy. so great. And <laughs> like, I, he, drop when it. he gave it, he's like, this was on your wish list. I was like, oh, <gasps> thank yeah. you. He was adorable yeah. and so sweet so and gorgeous you. and really nice human. Thank you so, so much for that. Thank you to you. And if anyone wants to buy us other gifts on Amazon, we have an Amazon wish list. The link is in the show notes. And to everyone who's done that in the past, when I mean, there's a number of you, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you. What's next, though, before we do the sex question? Oh something gosh. very exciting. This is so exciting. Guess what? What? We're, Chicken butt? We're go yes. And we're going to... No, two can butts. Two... Ooh. Because we are going to Costa Rica for our first ever... Good job. That was a good one. Sorry. I, I just I, landed the two can butt part. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I was like, wait, what? Delayed. Delayed response. So good. I'm glad that you're delayed. I'm delayed a little bit today as well. We're going to do our first ever couples retreat, which yes. we've received endless requests for. So it went live last week. And I mean, you can sign up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so it is actually live right now. You go to shamelesssex.com, our retreat section. Tell them what they win. You win a couples retreat. And we we only have room for six couples and this is at the same beautiful location that we went a year ago actually in November there was an all vulva owner retreat all women retreat women's day one a sloth just crawls up everyone's like I want to see a sloth there's just one like five feet away on a balcony monkeys like coming into our house but they're not attacking you you have to close the doors everyone because they will eat all the foods they will eat all the foods endless beautiful ocean views a beach that is a 10 minute hike through uh, amazing place we see toucans uh, and this one for couples of all genders and orientations. Again, only six spots of so six couples. So it will sell out very, very quickly. There's an infinity pool. Yeah, all the things. There's a private chef. 
There's oh, an excursion that Chef is Kenneth? going to be amazing. Chef Kenneth is uh, going to be there with his sous chef. And it's an incredible villa. You, it, it, and I cannot wait to go back. Everyone, you just go to shamelessex.com. There is uh, there are pictures. We have videos in various places to go and see and learn more. See for yourself. This place is fucking amazing. And we have testimonials, all the things. So again, shamelesssex.com, like April said, go to the retreat section. And just for this month, y'all, early bird special. This is the end, the end of August. So August 31st, 2024. This expires. This ends. You get 500 off per couple. If you use coupon code shameless couples. Again, this will end very soon, and I don't even know if it will be available right. in a week or two. And lastly, if you look at it, because it's a little bit, because we use We Travel, which is an external site to help us organize all the bookings, it, the price that's listed is per couple. It's not per individual. So if you have Ticket Shock, it's actually really worth the amount of money I mean, that we're charging. it's all inclusive, y'all. It's all inclusive. You don't flight, have to think but, about, yes. Yeah. You don't have to think about much. We give you the education slash the experience that's luxury in paradise in a time where you probably need it before the holidays. Yes. If you're in the U.S., Thanksgiving, there's Hanukkah, Christmas, then there's New Year's. That's all very stressful. Valentine's I'm starting Day. to tick my twitch. She's getting like nervous yeah. already. And $500 off is, yes, a limited time, August 31st. That's an awesome deal. So I just wanted to repeat the fact that we're going back to this location because it was so seamless and oh. incredible the first time we went. I don't usually like going back to places. Me neither. I want to see new places, but I'm so happy to go back to this place. And they're on top of it. So again, Shameless Couples is the discount code, and you would click on our website. It'll take you to We Travel, and that's where you get 500 off, but only for limited time. Are you ready for a sex question, Chip? I believe so. It's very simple, but it's complex. What's the meaning of life? Is nope. That it? Oh, okay, <laughs> thank God. Is there a God? There a- <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> uh, wrong podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> what if someone has a fear or is scared of sex? How can they overcome it? Okay, I thought first we of all... We just got this question this week, I thought it said sacred sex, no, but it says scared, scared of sex. She's they, like, fuck, I can't answer this question. No, I was I was definitely Scared timid. of sacred sex? <laughs> I, I am. That's actually a real life example of it, being scared. It is, yeah. and I am not going to say anything else. I just wanted to, to clarify. So I was scared. I was like, she just misread it. I thought it said sacred sex. I was no. like, no, please. What if someone has a fear or is scared of sex? How can they overcome it? And that's why I said it's a very simple question, but it's, it's deep and layered. And... This person didn't give us, you know, we don't know any history. We don't know if you're partner. We don't know your age. We don't know how you grew up. We don't know what your parents were like or if you even had parents that were there. And so we don't know any of these things. And so to generalize it when we're just talking about being afraid of sex and engaging in sex with people. To me, the first two things that come to mind, number one is going really slow. Like sex doesn't have to turn into air quotes sex, uh, meaning penetrative sex right away. Sex can be you start by just holding hands with someone to then the next that you're kissing like what you hear in the movies when like they go first, second, third base, you know, all that shit. That, there's some validity to that, to like not going all the way, not so that you're like not a slut or any of that. Like, if we're speaking specifically to fear, like slowness and then communicating with people about your need for slowness. And you could also communicate about your fear. That can be even more edgy for people, but communicating to people like, like sex is, 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 is edgy for me, or I have walls up around it, or I've had some not so great experiences. And so I need to go really slow. And if you can't sign up for that, then we probably shouldn't engage. And how about this one? Sex is really scary for me. Are you willing to let me just set the pace? Like, let me make the moves, set the pace. I'll let you know when I'm down for more. When I'm down for more, you can say no, too. It's not just like I run the show. And that's edgy because if you're scared of sex, it's probably scary to talk about sex. So step before that would be, which this episode is perfect for, though, with Dixie, Mm -hmm. because it's a lot about talking about sex. And you could work with Dixie, who does coaching for people. You could work with a sex and relationship coach or therapist and have the practice of talking about sex. That's why it's multi-layered. It's like, you know, like you get to this place and they go to this place, but you might need to go to another place to get to that place, which is even just being able to 
share or open up. You mean there's not just like a switch I can just tick and then I'm not going to be scared of sex anymore? I wish I had a, sw- a little switch I could tick for so many things in my life right now. <laughs> like if I could just press that button, but that's switch not I how it switch, works. Switch I could tick. Or it's whatever a it is. A little switch. blue pill I could take to solve things. Well, and it could help for some people if they have Right, erectile it, stuff. It, yeah, that that's valid for erections. <laughs> but like for for things that are emotional, though, that is it's work, right? It's a practice. I will add. I love what you said about the slowness, which people that move fast, it's difficult to find your tempo and go slowly. And I will say that overcoming something, it might be a journey that you don't realize you you summited the mountain and now you're descending it might be that you're slowly climbing up the mountain of being not fearful or you're not being scared anymore of sex and I like also what you said about sex meaning different things for different people sex could be something for you that's just a heavy dry hump making out and you feel like you orgasmed in your pants you didn't ejaculate on anyone or anything you don't want anyone to know because you already jizz your pants right yeah you're like I have this thing that I think sex has to be a certain way and for some people sex I've talked to people before that are telling me they went all the way which I love that it's so old school like I yeah. totally did I totally did it I, I mean, was like it's you kinda, did what it's kind of cute I was though. like you had like yeah. a penis in your vagina and yeah. your ass what and they're like no this was we sword, sword fighting maybe and we just oh, we cuddled saw- <laughs> I'm like oh, oh that's cute that's all the way that's sweet oh. I'm like did you make breakfast after what yeah. happened so your coffee tea se- defining sex free. for you yeah what did you have a diet coke <laughs> herbal what did you have? tea I'm not sure right I have no idea and I will also say that to plug the book, our Shameless Sex book would be helpful at this point. It's choose your own pleasure path because we want everyone to be able to unlock the sex life that they would desire. And there's lots of different chapters. It's broken up nicely. You can refer to different chapters at different times in your sexual journey. And that's anywhere books are sold. So that would be my two cents, uh, exploring other sex podcasts, yeah. uh, Shameless Sex. Learning going, as learning, much as possible. Listening to uh, Dixie De La Tour's body storytelling, where you can get more comfortable hearing people that don't talk about sex often. And she's saying a it's lot practice. of the people are afraid too when they're yeah. talking about it. Well, they're also going on stage. But just to talk afraid. to her. I was afraid. Yeah, when we were doing this today and also if you already know that you have a fear or are scared of sex my guess is maybe and I could be wrong that there's been experiences in the past that made that really scary and so that might also just be an opportunity or something letting you know to go work with a professional and there's there are we actually recently did episodes on how to find the right sex and uh, relationship therapist and coach for you and she talks about there are affordable avenues to but you know if you have that fear and like I mean I think most people have that fear. It doesn't mean you necessarily have trauma. And if you do, then maybe working with someone on that, you know, before you actually go and engage with other people could be really helpful. I love that. And thank you for listening and for writing in because we're here for you as much as we can. They already talked about sex. They emailed us. That's a huge step. Yeah. And something that most others aren't going to be as courageous enough to do. So thank you for that. And now let's get to the bio. Are you ready? Yeah, Jim. All right. Sexual folklorist and erotic storytelling and relationship coach Dixie De La Tour brings the nation's perverati. Amy taught me how to say that. Together, perverati. Perverati. I like, it's like a Ferrari. Yeah. Perverati. Together on the body storytelling stage. And via her podcast to tell their own infamously true tales of lust, love, kinky collisions, educational one night stands, and everything in between. Body is part storytelling show, part community event. Where else can you watch your friends and neighbors get on stage to share their most intimate moments? To learn more, go to bodystorytelling.com. And that's B A W D Y, y'all. Body. All right, everyone, it is interview time, and we are here with repeat guest, actually, Dixie De La Tour. It's my first time with her. Yes, Dixie, you were on our show. You and I recorded a live podcast, meaning like in person at yeah. Sex Geek Summer Camp in 2019. 
Really? No. Yeah. It, it, pandemic. Yeah. And it was called the best dating advice you'll ever receive. <laughs> and it was about dating advice. But then you were telling like doing erotic storytelling with it. I remember like sitting on the floor in the living room at Sex Geek Summer Camp and it and I was really closed off to dating after a shitty five and a half year roller coaster relationship. And the conversation with you helped me to open up, which will be part of my story later, to actually like kind of dating or being intimate again. I don't know the episode number, everyone, but if you look up Dixie on our website, you'll be able to find it. Um, so yeah, the best dating advice you'll ever receive. And you helped co-host or you opened for our show in Portland, which yes. was amazing. People loved it. That was fun. That was that really was fun. fun. That was Thank in, when was that? Part. I was going to say congratulations on a successful tour, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Our first right. mini tour. Well, and, yeah. And our first show, we got to, you had to have you, who is what I was the, the master of live shows, there uh, opening and being a part of it. And then uh, Dirty Lola, we love you as well. So, and yeah, we might be back in 2025. And we'll get to your tour because you have a lot mm. of dates coming up, everyone. And we will get that will be woven in. And, on and, the road again. Yeah. I can't wait to get on the road again. Dixie's really on the road again. If you, oh, uh, we will, yeah. Film. We'll see the dates later. So this episode <laughs> is about butt stuff. Um, uh, we're calling this episode butt jam worthy. It's anal August, everyone. And the three of us over here, we love anal August. We love anal. Anal. And I was going to ask, yeah. did y'all ask me to be on this podcast? Because I have a honky tonk, but dunk a tonk. Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> maybe oh yeah I was, maybe when we decided last minute that this was the i mean we knew we were going to come on the show but today was the day i was meditating and it came to me and it was because you're honky tonk but on donk <laughs> were you meditating on uh butt jams amy i was meditating on dixie's honky tonk but on donk dixie's like, honky tonk but on donk try saying that over that's and over a hard word. <laughs> honky yeah. tonk but on yeah, that's a hard one. That's a good one to warm up your vocals. Yeah, with Brett, it, is. Um, it is, especially for our line of work. You know, yeah. we're allowed to talk about those things. Yeah. Yes, we are. Uh, we, we love it, too. So our listeners already heard a little bit about you in the bio and the intro. But can you please tell us and our listeners a little bit more about how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? How I got to where I am today. Doesn't that sound like I'm farther ahead than I am in my life? <laughs> I feel the future. Like I yeah. <laughs> well, I have been doing body storytelling for about, I don't know, 18 years now. Before that, I was a Southern girl who moved to San Francisco, fell down the rabbit hole of sex parties. Suddenly, people were like, you seem cool. You want to go to a party? And I was like, terrified. Like, I don't even know what happens there. But I said yes, because I was not going to miss that opportunity. Fell madly in love with it, started producing them. I was always the person who worked the front door and I just loved the freedom and I loved how people took care of each other, especially my pod of people were just like, let's give everybody the things they want. They're here. Find out what we can give them. I called myself a fairy godmother, which was like, if you came in and this was your first sex party ever, my job is to take care of you because there were, you know. Before 2017, the world was different. You know, it was less consent focused and you had to take care of people, I felt. So when people came in and they said they were new, I would just go, so if you could have anything you want, what would it be? Mm -hmm. And they go, and I'm like, I'm not hitting on you. That's not what's happening. <laughs> You're here. If you could have it, and they go, I'd like to kiss a girl. And I'm like, ah. Which girl? And they'd tell me and I'm like, I know her. Let's go talk to her. And then I kind of <laughs> keep an eye on them to make sure that they had a great first experience because they did something super brave. You know, you walk through the door at a sex party. That's hard. And so, you know, I started doing this all the time. And then probably about 20 years ago, somebody invited to me to hear them tell a story at a personal narrative storytelling event. Now, I had no idea what that was. I thought that was going to be like that lady in the library who dress, dresses like Pocahontas and I was going to hate it. I was just like storytelling. And then I walked in and it was people telling stories about Burning Man. They were just like, oh, I liked the arts. I had sex. I did drugs. And they all just kind of told off the cuff stories. And all I did was sit there and think, holy shit, perverts would kick this up and down the street if we had a place <laughs> to tell our stories. And it also was very frustrating. To listen to people start to tell a story and somebody say, hey, you want to go get busy and busy and they'd wander away and I go, but I want to hear the rest of the story. 
<laughs> so I started putting it together with everybody I knew from the sex party world and just said, hey, we're going to get together. We're just going to tell, you know, stories. The theme this month is this. And they would go, where are we going to have sex? I'm like, there will we're not going to have sex. And they're like, <laughs> dumb, Dixie. <laughs> and I'm dumb. like, just try it. They loved it. And it's been going on for 18 years now from its baby roots, just in the pervert scene. I say pervert because, you know, we love we love sex. We talk about sex. Loud but- and proud pervert over here as well. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm a yeah. pervert. People could have yeah. sex yeah. afterwards, yeah. just yeah. not during the show. That yeah, brings it's a story. Just, where are you going to do it? Is the question. But yeah. <laughs> storytelling is such a baby step for people who are not brave enough to go to a sex party. And that's what I loved about it. I had a woman who it turned out she lived across the street from one of the biggest sex parties in San Francisco, and she was the receptionist at my dentist. <laughs> Somehow she found out that I do a dirty storytelling event and then I go to sex parties and she every time I come in to get dental work done, she would just go, so how does this how does that work? And how does that? I'm like, girl, I swear, just let me take you to it. I'll be your, I'll be your touchstone. I will not leave you. I will not jump in a pumpy pile. I'll take care of you. I promise. But she was never brave enough to do it. And she kept telling me, I just had a double mastectomy. I don't feel like I'm myself anymore. I don't feel I have a sexual side. She wanted it so bad, but she just couldn't get through the door. And then I started thinking storytelling is the perfect way to try new things on for size and then go, You know, you're listening to a story. They're walking you through a story. If it's a well-told story, you get to see it. You get to feel it. You get to understand why they did what they did and what they learned about themselves. And then it makes you go, that is something I want to do. And that person's right there in the room. So you can walk up and go, what's the name of that party? Or the first time you had anal. What? How did you get started? Like any of those things, you have a person who can mentor you. A question about the dent. So she would come in and get dental work. You didn't work in the dental office, though. Nope. I was a patient getting dental work. Okay. Because (laughs) I hate when people at the dentist, I love my dentist, but I hate when they ask me questions when their hands are in my mouth and they're cleaning my teeth because I'm like, (laughs) how am I supposed to be right now? And they do it all the time. Like, so how's work? I'm like, Uh, you like bite them. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I hate that too. I hate that too. Like, they're always like, you're a control freak, aren't you? You're just going to ask me a bunch of questions. There's no way for me to answer your question. Oh my God, you have like a ball gag in. No, or they have, this, they have the spritzer thing and you're like, they're dosing your mouth with like the water and then they're asking you questions and it's spraying everywhere. I'm like, sorry, they should say like blink twice or like yes, no. Yes, yes or no questions. Yeah, and you could go ah oh, for yes and ah oh, ah oh, for no. So anybody in the dental field yeah. out there, I'm just going to suggest this or you can tap them, but I don't know if you want to be touched. Yeah. Um, that's a suggestive. Yeah, blink, blinking might be good. Um, That was just one of my questions, but it wasn't really related to this. About my dental work. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was picturing you in the dental chair and then the hygienist asking you questions to help help them through talking about their stories. And you're responding like, I I had nothing in my mouth when she would talk to me. (laughs) Good to know. No ball gag. Ball gag free. So that's good. Thank you. Because you solved that mystery. Scooby-Doo for me. And my brain was like, Scooby-Doo. Uh, the second thing I wanted to question you on, this is not an interrogation. This is a fun communication. I like interrogation session. scenes. It's cool. So I wanted to comment <laughs> because storytelling, first of all, is an art form unlike any other. And you know the people, especially in the form of when you're talking about sexuality, relationships or previous experiences. And I've been in, in rooms with people that are terrible to- storytellers. And to- I was going to say Tory sellers, but this is how I, my brain is today. They're terrible Tory sellers. So <laughs> that being said, this art form is one of keeping people's attention and you can lose them easily because also think about the world we live in today, digital communication and everything's in an instant. People want the punchline to the joke before you even start telling the joke. And then you have people that are, you're holding on by the the seat of the couch, waiting for the tag of the story that's that's going to come. And sometimes it's never delivered. You're like, wait, I just waited 25 minutes for you. Uh-huh. Uh, so this art form is, you, you are incredibly gifted, the art form of storytelling. So thank you for that. And uh, folks out there listening can learn the ways... I, think that to weave what Dixie shares with folks in her storytelling into your own lives to make things more exciting. So listen up. So that's just a, a polite observation that comes from my heart. Can, can I say something about that? Yeah, so course. I had a terrible fear of public speaking when I got started. I was a loud mouth until there were three people. And then all of a sudden I was like, I can't talk to crowds. And I was terrified. So like I was always the wrangler. I was always the person who was part of 
putting on productions or sex parties or something. They go, the host is running late. Can you get on the mic and say, you know, we're going to start 15 minutes. I'm like, I can't talk into a microphone. So when I first got started in this and I had to start my own show, I was just like, I'd have to get up in front of everybody and do this. So because I didn't want to do the thing you're talking about, I started going, okay, I don't want to digress. I don't want to go on for 45 minutes. I want to remember where I was headed so I can arrive there. I want to grab their attention up front so that like they know they want to hear this story and it gives them like a, a clue at what's coming and stuff like that. So I created a system and that's what I teach now. I take people who've never, most of the people who've been on my stage have never been on stage and they're terrified. They have a fear of public speaking, but they have a great story. They just don't know how to tell it. So I teach them like a five point system. It's like plug and play. Here you go. Here, 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 here. Then you get to this. Why do we care about this story? Like the, the reason we care about the story is honestly, people care about stories because they feel like it's for them. If you're telling me a story that goes on for 12 minutes, for example, in my show, what's that story about? Why do I care? I don't want to listen to you brag about how you had a gang bang. That's nice for you. I don't care. I don't know you. But if you make it about something, if you make it about what you learned about yourself, was it about your self worth? Was it about opening your horizons was any of the things that it could possibly be about in a sex story. All of a sudden you get to see them go, holy shit, I just, I feel like I just skipped a year and a half of therapy. I, I understand why I had that gangbang last week or something like that. And I get more store, more standing ovations for people at my show than anywhere else, because we make it about you. We're going to tell you a great, crazy, wild, poignant, beautiful, sad, all of those things. But guess what? It's going to be reflected back to you so that we did that for you. That's why you care when you're listening. I think the best storytellers are comedians in my brain mm -hmm. because the good comedians, you are waiting for their punchline. But when they ease it, in, it's, it, there's some incredible comedians out there right now that I adore. Do you ever watch Kill Tony? It's on YouTube. It's yeah, sometimes I'm not a huge. I don't. I'm not a huge follower, but I definitely know what you're talking about. Are you? Someone said me recently. I haven't he's, watched either. Yeah, he's a fucking badass, and he Rogan uh, has a studio, and they, they kind of do variations, but they put all these want to be comedians into a um, random bowl that they they choose a name out of. And then these people are waiting in a bar. They don't know if uh, across the way from wherever the, the comedy show is airing. And then these people come out and most of them have zero skill at being a stand up comic. Some of them have a massive skills and then they just at the end, they either build them up or break them down. I'm like, ooh, ooh that's and I just think <laughs> that is terrifying to me. I love storytelling. And I think being on a stage where people are waiting for you to tell jokes or get to your erotic storyline would be so mortifying. And so I'm happy that you're here to. I'm going to get you on my stage expertise. one day, April. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I do not. Yeah. Leave, I do not drop you in. I walk you through the whole process. When somebody pitches me a story and I go, that's the story. Let's put it on stage. I work with them. And this is most of what I do is as a story coach, because we don't know what you're interested in. I represent the audience. I'm like, that thing you talked about? Let's talk more about that because that is fascinating. They're like, really? It's their life. They don't know it's fascinating. They're just like, oh, I've just been doing that my whole life. No, we want to understand. We want to learn. And also it's cool. Mm -hmm. People telling you really private things, especially if they tell them well. Yeah. I'm going well, to well, get you. Yeah, she's going to get I'm you. Gonna, there. It's gonna I'm scared. Scared. Well, we'll kind of maybe get a little variation online. So let's tell butt stories with the erotic storytelling extraordinaire right Go here. Go right to it. We, with no um, lube or anything? We, no, we're going to use lube. Okay, we're lubing good. up. Okay, Everyone okay. get your Uber lube out and scene. Okay. Um, we love Uber lube. We yes, love we Uber lube. So good for, good for the butt sex. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. God. So, April, do you want to go first with your erotics? No, no, no. Go, go first. Thank but you. If that's okay with you, blink twice if you're yes. Uh, okay, uh, okay. If you're watching, not watching YouTube, go watch us on YouTube because I just blink twice. And, and you'll see Dixie's fabulous I, asses. Yeah. If she, if she really sits up, you see those fabulous titties. And she's like, put her on her neck. Oh, wow. My clitoris. It's like, uh, just, oh, yeah. She's got a, uh, yeah, it's a clitoris necklace, everyone. But imagine a clitoris in your tits. Whoa. Yeah, I hide it down there. You got to go look for it. <laughs> Can you find the clitoris? Only if you're lucky. Oh. <laughs> hey, dudes, are you ready to revolutionize your pleasure? 
Well, then let me introduce you to Butter Wellness, the modern men's sexual wellness brand that's changing the game. Their star product, the Perineum Massager, is a buttery soft vibrator and designed to unlock the power of the male G-spot externally. No insertion required, just mind-blowing sensations that can even give you that super, oh, you'll be thinking about all day long. My partner hates most sex toys for dudes, but he loves the Perineum Massager. Just imagine stronger, full body orgasms, enhanced erections, and improved prostate health, all from one small but innovative device. It's not just for solo play either. Couples love it too. It works wonders as a clitoral stimulator, y'all. That's a twofer. Wait, what's a twofer? Oh, oh, like a two for one. <laughs> uh-huh. I love that chip. You got me on that one. But wait, y'all, there's more. The new butter starter kit as well uh, is fabulous and pairs the perineum massager with a water-based lube for the ultimate sexual experience. Are you ready to butter up your sex life? Then visit butterwellness.com because right now, Butter Wellness is offering our shameless listeners 15% off your entire order when you use code shameless at butterwellness.com. That's B U T T E R W E L L N E S S dot com. Code shameless to get 15% off the perineum massager or the butter starter kit. Link is in the episode's description. New sex podcast alert. Everyone listen up. A limited series made by my absolute favorite vibrator company is out and you have to check it out. It's called Making Magic. It's not just about how the magic wand is one of the world's most popular vibrators and absolutely squirtastic in my opinion. It's also an entertaining, informative storytelling series about everything from kink to porn to sexual healing. Here's a short 30 second teaser from their power play episode. In watching his scenes, I've seen him use a magic wand on someone through a latex cat suit. I've seen him hold a wand against someone until they squirted. I've even seen him use three wands on someone at once, one on their genitals and one on each nipple. Clearly he's got a high skill level in this area, but I was curious, did using a wand on people always come easily to him or was there initially a learning curve? Well, there wasn't a learning curve because the thing pretty much drives itself. I mean, the nice thing about the original Hitachi is that it had like off, high, or low. And it wasn't like the Morse code that you have in in modern uh, (laughs) wands today. And now I'm turned on. Thanks, Chip. This clip was from episode six, Power Play of the Making Magic series. This was only a little teaser, though. And if you want more, then you have to listen to the full episode. To listen to more, as well as the other nine from the Fantastic Limited series, go to makingmagicseries.com. Okay, so a butt you have a story, story for us, Amy? A butt story that came to mind for me. Actually, Dixie, this is going to be tied to that year in 2019 when you guested on Shameless Sex. And I told you that you helped to open up my very closed sexuality. Uh, my like, you know, my eroticism was very closed off. I was like, I don't want to date. I don't want to hold any man's process. And what I learned from you in that recording was like this idea of like creativity and play as opposed to everything having to be so serious. I think you told a story about like doing some illegal shit in San Francisco on a bridge just as a date. It wasn't having sex on a bridge. It was like something like that, right? Like make it playful. I probably told you the story about the date who I said, I don't want to go and have coffee with you. I want to have an adventure together. And one of the people suggested, why don't we climb to the top of the Lefty O'Dole bridge? And I was like, that that doesn't sound awkward. That sounds like let's make shit happen. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so they would not, the, the you know, uh, Homeland Security would not let us climb to the top of the <laughs> so we tried. And you know what? I'm fat, so I'm okay with not climbing to the top of a bridge. But it turned into a great experience of where, like, I get you. Your sense mm-hmm. of adventure makes me be interested in you. So I'm yeah. sorry. I did not mean to. Oh. Right. No, but yeah, you yeah, said, that, I said yeah. that. So yeah, you did. Yeah. And that was perfect. If something about that opened it up, me up in a way. Okay. Anal, anal puns, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. It's beginning. Amy's turning to a 14. It's going to get mad. Open me up. Uh, no, this doesn't go right into the anal, but to being more open to being intimate with certain people, but they had to go really slow with me. And there was someone that I met at 
Sex Geek Summer Camp that same year um, that that night. And this is going to get into the anal part. But that night after you you and I recorded, I had like a PG-13 foursome and he, and he was a part of it where no one's hands are going down anyone's pants, um, which felt really important to me as I was going through this, like I need slowness and gentleness anyway. So then I did start to see this person after, because he lived in the Bay area fairly close. And the first date or two was like, we held hands and we kissed, you know? <laughs> which is what I needed after five and a half years of feeling like I bypassed myself. And I know we're talking about anal, but like where I was at, certainly anal was not available then. And then when when more like genitals and sex started to be a part of it, he is a super kinky person. And and I started to learn that I I always thought I was a kinky person, but I didn't see the degrees of it. Uh And so after a number of dates and feeling more and more safety because of like the slowness and connection, I felt my body like relax and open and relax and open. And I recall this one time, middle of the day, everyone, middle of the day, light up. And we were naked and we had already been, you know, playing, like touching, maybe having penetrative sex. I'm not sure. He had, he's like, can I open my toy drawer? It's, you know, under, under the bed. One of those ones is part of the bed, you know, like those he little. He on a boat. Yeah. He, he lived okay, on a, I yeah. And Sausalito okay. had a oh, boat. That's right. Houseboat. Oh, um, okay. He's like, can I open my toy drawer? And it became guess what toy this is in your one in your holes okay okay and so i got to see the toys before and i will just name two of them off the the top of my my head here yeah one of them is the enjoy xl which is a giant stainless steel butt plug dixie you probably know what that one is yes you do Uh (laughs) april you know these ones it's just the biggest and heaviest looks like a hook kind of well, no, it's, oh, no it's, the wand one. It's oh. the butt plugs. There's like the small, medium, large. Oh, the plug. OK, sorry. sorry. It's the Excel. Mm-hmm. And so that was one I saw. And then the other one I saw was an inflatable silicone butt plug. Um, so it was a, by like an anal fantasies, the brand inflatable. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know this. So I'm explaining to you. OK. Yes. So he held these out and basically got consent to use these on my body. I'm laying face down. So we had already consented, though, and with a lot of Uber lube, everyone, I feel, number one, I feel something going into my pussy, and my pussy is taking a while to, like, open up. It feels, like, kind of, like, cold and heavy, and, you know, and there were a couple other toys, too, by the way. It wasn't just this, but these are the ones that stood out, and it goes into my pussy, and and I'm just thinking my brain is like, I don't know, like, I don't know, like giant kind of bulbous dildo thing, like big, wide head because it's a pussy, right? Pussy toy. And then and that one goes in and, and it feels nice. It feels nice. It feels like full. That one comes out and then something goes into my ass and it's very slow. Like, you know, everyone so go slow, lots of lube. So it goes in and then I feel it get like bigger and bigger and everyone probably already knows what toys I'm talking about when what went in which holes when they get bigger it gets bigger and bigger and fuller and fuller and fuller and I just feel my ass like kind of opening up but in a relaxing way and then when that toy came out then I um, had really fantastic anal sex because my ass was super opened up I was super turned on and it was relaxed from whatever was in there. And then we played the guess what toy it was. And I think I already fucked my story up because I told you the toys in the beginning. But I never would have thought the Enjoy 11 was a pussy toy, too. I'm not 11. Sorry. The Enjoy XL could be used in a pussy. That's what he put into my pussy first. Mm. And because it's a butt plug, my brain said that it must be something else. Must go in a butt. Yeah, it must go in her butt. And but it was the inflatable that went into my ass. And because it, the way it goes in and because this person and I had built so much slowness, so much safety, so much trust for me to just like lay there and surrender to these like, you know, mystery items. And then this inflatable goes in, it goes in, it stays small. But when you it's like a pump that oh, so it makes the, it bigger, the bulb bigger. On the end? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, bigger. Okay. And then when you want it to shrink again to take it out, you press a button and the air comes and goes, Shoo, and then you can take it out. Okay, never uh-huh. this. I know, right? And and so what I learned, number one, the ass can take a lot. You can put some really big things in there. They don't have to start big and they can get big. And it's quite fascinating. And number two, 
in especially with anal but vaginal sex for me too is is but speaking specifically to anal when i feel really really safe relaxed aroused and that might take days if not weeks for me to feel that way with you speaking specifically for the butt Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of magic can happen and i can lay down and surrender and just trust you with and also like you know he knows about like butt safe toys and all those things too and I was like, well, I've had like a, a huge inflatable in my ass that I've now used the Enjoy XL and I never had those experiences. So check, got those ones. Nice. Yeah, that was fun. So guess what? What? You told me you're not a good storyteller. You've told me you don't <laughs> consider yourself a good storyteller, but guess what you did? You made that story about the listener. You ah. talked about trust <laughs> and safety, which is something we all understand. We all want that with sex. So you are a great storyteller, Amy. Don't tell yourself that. Oh, thank okay. you. Can I show you that I was sitting here scribbling while you were doing it so that I could give you feedback if you wanted it? Yeah. I asked oh, she's got all kinds open. of notes. Whoa. And I've got 2019. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, my God. She wrote like two pages. 2019? No, from what I said. Oh. <laughs> PG oh, okay. rated foursome. So I'm taking notes. Mm-hmm. Can, mm-hmm. Can, I, can I story coach you a little bit? On Fuck that? yeah. Okay. Great job. Did you hear how curious April was? Was like, what kind of toy was it? Was I it, don't know. When you that, say inflatable, yeah. what do you mean? One great thing to do in situations like that is when somebody's listening to you tell a story, they are drawing pictures in their head of what you're telling them. If you give them the right details, they're like, oh, oh, I know. Or I don't know what that is, but that's cool. Oh, I can see it, you know. Give them the color of the inflatable one. In my brain, it was black. Was it yeah, black? it was. Most, most I mean, butt toys are black because I would, of I'm going to say most anal toys should be black, although the Enjoy XL is silver, but it's stainless steel, very easy yeah. to clean. But I was like, picturing like a large banana that you could use in the pool afterward. Interesting. Ankle. You could, but <laughs> ew. Um, <Yeah. laughs> Interesting. But, you know, like a pool floaty, oh, like infla- giant bananas or bacon. Floaties. They're like bacon floaties and they like... It's like, damn, how big does it get? So that's where my brain goes. <laughs> oh my God. So when it comes to things like describing sex toys, give us color, give us yeah. shape. And you did a great job. Like April was 100% there going, wait, oh, what did it look like? You throw in those details as you're going. You're answering their questions before they ask them. So they're like, now they're fully in the story. They're not being distracted from, I wonder what kind of... T- when they say inflatable, that kind of thing. For a story about sex, I always recommend that people give the character a name and a physical description because not ha- not the real one, doesn't have to be the real one. But if we are going to have a sexual adventure and we're being walked through your sexual adventure, if we don't have details, we're going to be, you're going to go, I met this guy and we're going to go, okay. <laughs> but if you go, I met this guy at Sex Geek Summer Camp. Act as though it's true, even if it's like, because we're letting them draw pictures. Kevin. Adam yeah. was the Adam. most handsome, looked like a cross between Brad Pitt and Jeff Goldblum. And people can go, oh, I got it. <laughs> it really me. quickly gives you a visual. And usually it makes them go, oh, yeah, I got it. What's yeah. oh, Adam's? I think I want Adam to fuck me in the butt. You know, like <laughs> it puts them there and they're excited for you. They're like, obviously, we have consent. Amy is like 100 percent on board in this story. It's very clear. I can tell they're attractive. The visuals make them attractive. So now I'm going, oh, my God, really? And then what? Oh, my God, that's so good. They're in your story with you. They're they're there. And then you bring them around this beautiful place. Trust and safety. And how you had a sexual experience unlike none you'd ever had before. You created butt magic together because <laughs> Adam made thank you. you thank fun. you to Adam if you're listening. His name's not Adam. But they, <laughs> seriously, thank you to Adam. Thank I you, thought Adam. it was Kevin. Yeah. Kevin with the large and in banana inflatable. Yeah, butt it, that's it was plug. Adam. It was Adam <laughs> with inflatable butt plug that was black. And uh, Dixie, you've met Adam before. I'll tell you later who Adam is. But it was black. <laughs> Wait. The inflatable butt plug. Like, yes, so yeah, that was Great. black. It was Just not clarifying. a large banana. No, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an inflatable and plug before. Thank you for telling me about that. Do you have those on Pure Pleasure? We do. Right? Yeah. So yeah, okay. these toys, and and I also just want to say to everyone, the whole Enjoy line, like this. So this, when we're talking about this, is some of our favorite butt plugs that are stainless steel, like nice and heavy and weighted, but but they fit in real nice. They have a nice thin neck. They can stay they in warm up too. Yeah, you can put them. You can make them cold. They have a small. Oh, you can make them cold. You can make hot. 
Yeah, they have multiple sizes. If you, if I was new, I would probably get a medium. Um, there's mm-hmm. a small, medium, there's a large, and then I'm talking about the XL. And this is the brand Enjoy, N-J-O-Y. And then the inflatable I'm talking about is by a brand called Anal Fantasy. And then it's a silicone inflatable plugs. And I say silicone because a lot of inflatable plugs are like made of toxic, um, porous materials. And this is all, you can get them all at purepleasureshop.com, sex shop I have with my mom. If you use this month, if you use coupon code anal August 2024, you get 20% off. And if you're listening later, you always get 15% off with coupon code shameless sex. So go check them out or just oh my, all the other plugs. I'm checking I'm them so out right impressed. now. Y'all have already it was like looking up an inflatable right now. She's so like, how do I get I, one? I honestly, I didn't know. I knew that story a little bit, but I didn't see. I'm looking it up. Well, I want to see what it looks like. What oh. about Dixie's? Should I not have? I felt like I made a mistake not lay, like painting the picture, like all the toy options. Huh? And I only said two toys. And I didn't describe what you said, like the colors and the textures and all. Yeah. Those things. So what I would have done is if he opened that drawer that was under the bed and in it, there were so many toys. And are you going to give us in a case like that where two were involved? I would say at least five. Oh, my God. There's. You know, there was handcuffs. There was this. So you know, name a bunch of different kind of toys so that we can feel like we're looking in the drawer and we can see what the options are. And then Adam says, lay back and puts his blindfold on. And now we're going to play guess the toy. And you're just going now you've told them what the options are. And you're now doing it strictly by sensation, by feeling it because you can't see the toy. And you're like, oh, my God, I wonder, ooh, it's that. Ooh. And then the next one is like in your butt and you have this crazy great sex. And then at the end, when you're not, we love to feel like we're at the end of a sex scene. You know, it's like squirting orgasms or, oh, my God, I had my first anal orgasm or whatever you, you personally believe, then you can just go, you're laying there, you've had the most mind blowing sex of your life. And then you're just like, okay, like, you know how relaxed you are after sex? Okay. I got to know which one was it? Which, which one was it? I, I had, you know, and then he goes and then he pulls it out and you can do a reflect back. He pulls out this black thing with a pump on it. And he goes, the inflatable butt plug was in your ass and the enjoy but, you know, the the Enjoy XL, which is designed for your butt, was in your pussy. And you're like, oh, my God, I thought it could only I didn't realize you could. That's put what it I was like. That was in my pussy. He's all getting Vanna White with it. He's like yeah. displaying yeah. the get all Vanna White. Here you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And you can you're teaching people that you can use things in different way because you didn't know. We love it when we're there. So you're going, you can use that in a pussy. People are going to go home and put that fucking thing in their pussy. They are because they just learned it's possible. I highly recommend it. Uh, yes. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. I feel like I'm cheating because now I have all these tips. Uh, what do you mean tips? Oh, from, oh no, that's from fine. Dixie. You can, no, no, okay. Storytelling. Oh, you, okay. I talked to Dixie before this and I've seen more, some of her live performances. So I actually had some inside information on how to tell some erotic stories, even mm. though I, I didn't do it perfectly. So Chip, what about your butt stories. Hey, Chip, well, what's in your butt? Oh, okay. What's in your butt? So, hey, Chip, can I tell you something really quick? Of course. I have a level of my Patreon called the Butt Plug Club. Ooh. Because I have, and if if you guys want custom butt plugs for shameless sex, I can hook you up. I have some that's shaped make- like Amy's head, one that's shaped like, shaped like my head. You could put us in your butt. That would be great. I bet he could do it because he can do anything. He is the maestro of butt plugs. He can do anything. But I had butt plugs made with my podcast logo on the end of it. Oh, cool. So it's a custom stainless steel butt plug. And so when you get on the butt plug club level, I send you a butt plug and I send you some packets of lube and I, uh, and then I'm just like, okay, we're going to have like a meeting on Zoom. Let's all have a conversation. Got your butt plug in, got your earbuds in. Let's talk about butts or let's talk about about whatever, anything sexual, because we don't have a place to do that. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Now I'm going to hear your butt sex story. Um, Well, Uh, (laughs) well, that, yes, or or logo, maybe we'll get to the face. That's for the butt club 2.0 people. 
Butt Plug Club 2.0. <laughs> Butt yeah. Plug Club 2.0. Time for a quick break to talk about one of our sponsors who just so happens to be our absolute favorite lube, Uber Lube. Uber Lube is a luxurious silicone lubricant and it enhances intimacy. It's there when you want it and it blends in when you're done with it. So you have control over that lube. It's long lasting and leaves the skin extra velvety. And honestly, y'all, I want it all over my body. Thousands of doctors in the U.S. are recommending Uber Lube to their patients. It's body friendly, less likely to change the pH and has vitamin E so it feels extra moisturizing. There's a reason why we've been a fan of Uber Lube for years. There's no flavor or scent. It's even great for oral sex, everyone. But it's not just great for sex. You can use it for massage, your hair. You can prevent chafing. It even brings out the colors of your beautiful tattoos. And the bottle is absolutely gorgeous. It looks more like a cosmetic, so you can leave it anywhere shamelessly for easy access. Just go to uberlube.com and use the discount code SHAMELESS10 to get 10% off and free shipping. Again, that's U-B-E-R-L-U-B-E.com right now with code SHAMELESS10 for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast is also brought to you by OMGS.com. Join over 1 million people who are experiencing more pleasure with OMGS. They take scientific research of thousands of vulva owners showing techniques to pleasure that pussy. They turn this research into tasteful educational short videos, animated modules, and infographics. OMGS is for anyone who wants to learn about vulva pleasure or take it to the next level. Want to take your orgasms from good to out of this world? Then check out OMGS. Or if you're a vulva lover and want to up your pussy pleasuring skills, then you need to check out OMGS. I've personally been recommending OMGS to my clients for years, and it's completely changed their lives. They have three seasons, external pleasure, internal pleasure, and sex toys. It's not a subscription service, and you don't need to download a thing. OMGS also makes a fabulous gift, and your purchase supports more pleasure research. So just go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off right now. Again, that's omgs.com slash shameless to receive 10% off unlimited access towards enhancing your pleasure power. The link is in the episode's description. Okay, so let's set the scene here. I'm newer to anal sex. This was 2018. I had my first anal sex experience. It took me a long time because I was one when I worked at Pure Pleasure Shop. It was my first adult store that I'd ever been into, let alone uh, I had never like sold butt plugs, seen butt plugs or anal beads, but I had owned a couple. I just never really experienced actually using them. I sold probably more butt plugs than anyone though, which was interesting in the store. Amy was like, I can't believe you've never tried them. I was waiting for the proper Your butt person. numbers are, are super they were, high. They're, yes. <laughs> so finally I um, newly divorced and I am with my partner. Let's call him. What do you want to call him? Cindy. Cindy. <laughs> I'm at the how about um Sydney? Sydney. Sure, I like this, Sydney. So Sydney. I'm with him, okay. Sydney. He's he's my current partner as well. And he's this super buff older man. He's uh-huh. uh, in his 50s and we're about 14 years apart. He's got tattoos everywhere and he's bald, uh, super hot. And we had our first anal sex experience, which was amazing. I was really nervous. We didn't use any toys. I had this whole toy anal kit that I had been saving. It was in this zip up. Ba- the, the those little they're little toy bags and so I put these underwear in them that had this red ribbon they're from Paris so I, my butt would be a present for whoever was uh, whoever was the the person that was going to take my quote unquote butt virginity for the first time and then there was some lube in there and I would bring it with me when I was dating but no one was ever worthy of my ass until. Sydney, <laughs> look at me we'll like call what? him the the buff. <laughs> Sydney, hot buff Sydney. Yeah. So our first anal sex experience, which Miss Amy put into our calendar, it's still in there today. Their calendar, January seventeenth. It's my anniversary, and we celebrate it. Uh, Amy and I celebrate it. Face right now, her eyes. She's like, what? we don't really celebrate it every year uh, because I get uh, uh, a little bit red faced talking about it. So my first anal experience was amazing, right? And I couldn't believe I'd waited so long. I had most powerful orgasms. I was telling everyone about it, like. I'm so stoked. I found a new orifice that can give you pleasure that I've learned about, read about, but never actually experienced. I maybe had a finger in the butt 
never had had a toy in my butt and I never used the anal kit either. So it was still there and it's actually still there uh, with the uh, Parisian thong underwear with the bow on the back that you can untie. Very sexy. So let's fast forward to a couple of weeks later. I'm thinking, all right, I'm super turned on. We went to dinner. We had a huge dinner and we ate a bunch of Indian food, which was super yummy, right? So I was really full, but we were we went on a little walk and then I was telling him how hot and bothered I was thinking about our uh, previous anal experience, uh, which was a few weeks before that, say a couple weeks, two to three weeks before that right time. This was in 2018, y'all. That's a long time ago. So I was telling him about it on the walk, burning off the Indian food. We go back. We're just that we're just getting down and he sticks a finger in the butt. It's all hot. I have my magic wand, the plug in on my, my vulva, which really helps relax my anal orifice. I learned over self-discovery. So if anybody out there is wondering how you can relax the orifices, that is a genius hack. So I use my magic wand, which kind of, brrr, and then he can feel it when his cock goes inside, either if it's in my vulva, I mean, in my vagina, or if it's in my asshole, he can feel it too, which he loves. So we're getting down. It's super fun. I have a massive orgasm. It's amazing. And he then finishes nearly a few minutes after, again, that when you're in the portal of hot, and heavy sex. I don't have a watch, right? I don't know how many minutes have gone by, but it was hot. We both orgasm, orgasm, and we had the fascinator, the liberator blanket. It's like a squirt blanket. We had that on the bed. And so he takes his dick out and it's just full of shit. And I am a person that is completely germaphobe. I flush my my bio uh my biohazard waste in the toilet. I don't look at it, I don't inspect it. I flush it and then I wipe and then I use my bidet and then I flush again. So I'm not an inspector of the BMs, right? So I was like oh! I was mortified. I was like get it away from me. Him thinking that I was talking about his cock because it was just full. It looked like Thanksgiving dinner like stuffing <laughs> um which I was like never again will I eat uh, Indian food or any food in that uh, quantity before an evening of hot anal sex. I'll stick to the vagina or maybe just a toy in there that I could just Italian. go into. Yeah. Or Italian. Some, or maybe just some smoothies. Stick it like some basic, be like, no, just being like some dry chicken with rice. Yeah. Not a lot of fiber. <laughs> Let's not do a lot of fibrous <laughs> beans and lentils and things. So that was the thing. I that that Dara masala and, and, that oh my god, it's delicious though. It right? was so yes, but not and now I, I have had trouble eating Indian food since then in general because I'm like, oh my god, all I could think about was the curry dick, right? So he showers off and I was through the liberator fastener blanket into the into the washing machine and rinsed myself off and like I was like, never let's never speak of this again. And then a few minutes later, because your ass gets stretched out, what I do? I was trying to just let out a nice little toot and I sharded. And that's the end of my story. What did you learn from it? <laughs> what did you learn from it? <laughs> so what I learned is that I got completely that's shameless. Sometimes you think you tooted, but actually you sharded. Yeah, no. I learned that sometimes toots can be sharded. Yes, and that there was no shame. And I really, my partner and I, Sydney, this buff, like hot daddy for me, who I'm still with after seven plus years, that the trust was huge. And I'd never never had my BMs on anybody's body before, first of all, which no shame in it if you're into that, but that's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. I'm quote unquote germaphobe. I wash my hands incessantly and I wipe incessantly. And I, again, I do the courtesy flush, everyone, if you want to learn. Courtesy flush is, you know, flushing it so it doesn't, you don't know, steam up the bathroom. You're welcome for that bit of advice as well. So this isn't about me, but this is about it being is. shameless sometimes. This is, you. This is your story. The learning, the learning <laughs> process is I became totally shameless about sharing things with my partner after that. And it really helped us sail to a new destination of trust and appreciation for our, our bodies and his, his him being super, super chill about me kind of shaming him for having my shit on his dick, which at the time it was just reaction, right? It was just a reactionary thing. I was like, oh, get that thing away from me, which you know, is not nice. The thing about stuff like that is you do have the elements in there that make it a relatable story. Usually 
I work with people to help them move it around so that they can feel it at the right. That story's about shame. You know, you tr- had no idea that was going to happen and you were humiliated, you said. And then, you know, your partner was just totally cool. Like, it's it's a body function. It's going to, it's anal. It's going to happen. You he know? did not you me once, which was really, that was comforting for me. I ewed, I, yeah. ewed, I ewed him, not not him, but the, the situation. So thank you. That yeah. was about shame. Yes. And then the sharding on top of that was like the the candle on the birthday the cake. I, icing. The icing. No, it was like the candle. I feel like the icing was. I don't want shit icing. Yes. No, me neither. <laughs> the candle. The shard. Which hasn't been the last time, by the way. That's the that's all close the story. I've uh, that's happened. Anal does it sometimes because you get so open. Just be careful. Yeah. Touch your farts so, after anal. So the way Everyone. the way you could reshape that story to make it, you've given all the elements there. You've said this person is still your partner. You've you've got the exact fucking date of losing your anal cherry. Like you've got so many great details of her. there. Yeah. So all you're going to do is you're going to reflect back on what you said earlier in the story. It's like. You know, I was humiliated and I ran out of the room and Sydney was just like, it's going to happen. It's part of the process. It's a body. I'm going to go take a shower. Why don't you throw that in the wash? And so cool. And then you're like, it's not the worst thing in the world. I live through it. It's not a big deal. Other people who you feel safe with and who who really care about you are just going to be it's you. I care about you. You what know about closing We're with a one-liner. Still- like if you and then he said, if you're gonna play in the mud, you might get dirty. Even though that didn't happen, would that be a good closer? Like stand up. <laughs> it could be. Okay. It could be. I want to. I think you your this. story has elements of. It depends on the story, and it depends on your style. It's your story. You get to tell it however you want, but. I mean, I think the fact that you mentioned that y'all were still together today, like you had this thing that you'd never done before with anybody. They had to be really special if you're going to do this. You had that kit sitting there forever. Obviously, you're very interested and don't, you know, like you're selling more anal toys than anybody else. So obviously, you had that, you know, like you had an interest in it, but this was special. You were saving it for a special person. And when you had this mind-blowing sex and it was slow and it was careful and it and they really were considerate of you because, you know, you're not just an orifice. You're a human being and they really care about you. When this worst fear ever happened, shitting all over the place, just to have them be matter of fact and go, it's not a big deal, April. You're still with that person today because they made you feel that way. They cared about you. Like, that's what I hear in this story. You can do anything you want with your story. It's your story. Well, and I want to add, thank you for that feedback because I do love that. I want to add too, the reason I brought up the first anal experience being so blissful was because I think if that would have happened the first time, I don't know if I would have ever tried anal again. And I thought about that after the conclusion of the story because that's that was the whole point of me because I thought it was going to be linear, right? That was going to happen every time, which is not the case of anal sex ever. It's never or linear sex ever. or sex ever, <laughs> right? Well, I can kind of predict what's going to happen if I put a giant plug-in wand, ma- magic wand on my vulva. I can usually, I, I can pretty much, not guarantee every time, but I can pretty much 90% of the time know I'm going to orgasm at some point, whether it's alone or with partner or partners. And so the whole other piece and I don't think anal douching would help. So that's the only thing I would say to everyone as well. Yeah. It just, you could try again if you did have that experience the first time or, or you don't have to. I have a favorite quote that I use all the time. Experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. So every time something happens to you in life and it's less than perfect. And now I know that. And you just move on with that new knowledge. It's not the end of the world. Love that. Totally. I love just like the, the piece here in the erotic storytelling piece, whether you're on stage or you're listening. And also a lot of people reach out to us uh, be, because they don't have anyone else to talk to about sex or they don't exactly. know how to talk about yeah. sex. And this is by listening to other people talk about sex in this way, as well as practicing some variation of this. And I know you do coaching um, and we will get into how people can do that with you. And then by the way, the coaching, everyone isn't just so you get on Dixie's stage. This can just be like for your own own practice, right? I mean, it's a, it's a skill, it's an art form. Um, and so, and it's super valuable. And now April and I have reframed our stories here. <laughs> and uh, I was nervous. Now you know me too. Super scary. Thank you, Dixie, for the, for the 
Thank you. Thank yeah. you for Bye. trusting me to tell me a story. I mean, I know it is intimidating. We Everybody's just like, oh, I'm not going to do it right or I'm not going to be good enough. Everybody starts, you know, you start where you start and then you just, I thought you did a great job. And yeah, the way you give feedback feels really safe. You're not like, oh, you did this wrong. Or like, you know, it was more like, here's here's just more like highlighting the experience or here's what I'm hearing, right? Like with April was more shame and and, and trust and me was more like trust and safety. Mm -hmm. And so you have a really wonderful way of doing this. And so we want to hear more. Number one, um, you already talked about this a little bit, but re-mentioned your butt plug club on Patreon. That is a mouthful but, right there. Well, here's another butt though. But, 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 but before we do that, everyone, the three of us, before we started recording this, we decided that we are going to do a special offering offering for you listeners. We are creating a collaborative butt jams worthy playlist on Spotify. And we <laughs> want your most butt worthy songs. And we may not use them just so you know, but here's how, what you do to enter. It's not exactly a contest, be a part of it. But if you do this, you might get the butt jams list or you will get the list as long as you follow us yeah, on Instagram. They're going to, they're going to get, if they're on Instagram, they're going to get it, but we're going to yeah. give you the playlist so that yeah. we decide to get down and yeah. you decide that you're going to give it a try. You got the perfect oh, you got the, list. All you got the, the perfect list. butt jam songs. Yeah. And so uh, we were listening to some other butt jams <laughs> earlier and we we're like, this one's not even about butts. It doesn't have to be about butts. Anyways, it can just be something that you want to have butt sex Whatever to. you think is your butt song. Okay. So what you do is you go to, to Instagram, find Shameless Sex Podcast. We are shadow banned. So if you cannot find Shameless Sex Podcast, you're not following us already, go to April Lambert's Instagram, find Shameless Sex through there and follow us. Go to Body Storytelling, B-A-W-D-Y Storytelling. So go to both of these on Instagram, follow us. Look for the reel. This will be next week. I believe this is on August 13th. And you have one week, one week from August 13th to find the reel that is this exact clip actually about butt jams. And you will can post in the comments your butt jam worthy songs. And then what we will do is we will put those together and we'll pick and choose and we'll listen or maybe even put them in special order. We'll see. And a week later on both of our Instagrams on Shameless Sex Podcast and Body B-A-W-D-Y Storytelling on Instagram, we will release the official the but Spotify jam. August, butt jam. On August Spotify. 20th, we'll release it yes. on 2024. Yes. So the 13th submit. Uh, somewhere between well, the thirteenth, from the thirteenth to twentieth, yes. Okay. So, so it'll be, uh, yeah. And then, so go the minute you hear this, and if you're too late in the game, go follow us and go look for this reel because it's still there. It's Instagram; these don't yeah. disappear. And then you can go find the butt jams. Spotify. I'm not sure if you do Linktree or direct me or or yeah, we can do Linktree. Yeah. yeah, we could always just put the playlist there so that people can find it later on and make it easy for them. We yeah. come to watch the reels, but yeah, gotta, they got to listen to this episode and then they look for the reels so that they can see what we're talking about. So your free well, gift. That. Okay. I'm just interrupting. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You know, I was listening to some butt jams as I was getting ready for this episode. Iggy pop has a song called butt town. I never knew that. April was sending me one that she loves from Mark Rebele. Amy was. Oh, I did. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. The one, the booty hole, the I would open your booty hole. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. Your butt hole. I love yeah. my um, baby's got back is yeah. obvious. Do you have any any favorites, April? What do you when you do your butt stuff these days? And she does a lot of that. What do you listen to? Oh, well, um, a lot of times you're a Frank Ocean girl. Uh, Frank Ocean is <laughs> my go to for everything. Uh, Fred again. I love some me some Fred again. I don't know about specific butt songs. I don't think that they either of those artists have any butt songs, but it's just like a very flowy, depending on what uh, there's so many different Frank Ocean albums that i'm gonna uh, have great. to listen to more frank ocean wow He's okay rad and fred again is also um it's it's like a little like uh, the, i don't like to say techno because people think of like old school techno but there's it's a it's a mixture of a lot of different genres and it's got some really good vibes um but i can think of some other i mean any beyonce songs that are so are so good but sometimes you can't find her on spotify because eh, i won't speak for her but <laughs> But what you're saying, like their artists as well. Butt songs could be about butts. They also might not be about butts at all. No. They might just be sexy. So right, you yeah. do you. But yeah. I can. I have to ponder this because I'm really serious about music. So I'll think of some good. I, I actually came across "Hey Ya" by Outkast, and it was just oh, like yeah. "Shake It Like a Polaroid Picture." I'm like, 
is that a butt jam? <laughs> I've never wow. really thought about. I guess the thing they're shaking would be a butt. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, but it never yeah. occurred to me before. So yeah, but cool. does it want you to put a butt plug in your butt? Hmm. Mm. Or just take a Polaroid picture. Just about the tempo <laughs> st- starting soft and then going hard. Yeah, you want to create a playlist so that you can start getting warmed up. Maybe it's not quite so graphic, and maybe that's where you put a song like "Hey Ya" or something like that. And then "Baby's Got Back" makes you feel like you're looking at a butt. You know, like watching somebody dance, and you're thinking about a butt. And now you're moving toward it, and all of a sudden you're just like, "Okay, what's going to make me wanna?" stick something in my butt you know, do you know the song At- atlians by outcast that song is no. sick that's like atlians. A good atlians it's really good I, uh, I love outcast too i love me some outcast um so- can i t- can i tell you a thing about butt plugs real quick yes so during the pandemic um i attended a bunch of zoom orgies And um, I was just like, this is weird. This is my entire community. I'm going to watch my whole community jerk off. And that's not usually. I think I was on the same orgy as you, by the way. I think I know. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. totally. At least once. Yeah. (laughs) So so they're they're using very careful language as they're talking about it. Like instead of saying, get ready to jerk off, they're like, drop into your body. (laughs) Like, what does that mean? I got really stoned before the party, which was a huge mistake because I was like, three beats behind my partner and I are sitting there getting all warmed up and everything. And then they're like, okay, now we want you to get, you know, something like an appendage. Maybe they wouldn't say dildo. They wouldn't say dildo. They were just like, maybe some fruit. And so my partner goes into the kitchen and grabs (laughs) two, this is the pandemic. So, you know, the stuff in the house is what we have. And he goes and gets a couple of bananas that we have, which are way too right. I'm like, we're making chocolate chip banana bread. We're not <laughs> using that. It's a, <laughs> it's a mushy banana. We're not going to use that. So I'm just too stoned for this party. And at a certain point, everything's getting going really good. And he's, he's like, okay, we're all going to be muted. But when you're getting close, when you're getting ready to come, I want you to I want to, yeah, unmute yourself so that we can hear you. But all of it is without saying, come, the language is so careful. I'm too stoned for this. And at a, you know, I'm just kind of like trying to keep up going, is my house clean enough? We're on Zoom, you know, that stuff. Suddenly everybody's getting sexy. And I'm watching this woman take a gigantic 12 inch dick and just go into town. And I'm just like, you know, you get, you kind of get distracted by the thing that I learned in this Zoom orgy. You know how people have fake backgrounds in Zoom? Mm-hmm. This guy was sitting at his desk jerking off and you could see his dick. And once he started really getting into it, his hand was moving so much. The background freaked out. It did not know what to it do. It wasn't real. It was <laughs> <Yeah>. like, oh. <laughs> it was like, I was just like, wow, you can freak out a fake background by jerking off too hard. I just learned that. I feel like I've learned something and I can go home now. And oh, wait, I am home. Um, <laughs> so at a certain point, the host is just like, okay, so he's, he, everybody's jerking off. You know, it's kind of like there's music playing in the background and, and everything. The host puts his feet up on something so that he can get a good grip because he's doing it on Zoom. So of course he's making visuals and everything. And as he acquires a foothold and he settles in really good, my little cartoon face is peeking out of his asshole. He's got a butt plug in and it's me. I'm like, oh, is that my face? You're like, like, am I high? Am I high? I'm that high right now. Am I so high? Is that my face in his asshole? My partner's like, that's one of your butt plugs. Yeah, that's your face in his asshole on Zoom. <laughs> oh, that in the orgy. is amazing. Well, okay, maybe I wasn't there for that one because I would have noticed that. But okay. I think I think I want shameless sex butt plugs so that I can see your two faces peeking out of buttholes. I would like to. I'm I'm a yes. So oh yeah, there's the face mini version of yes. this. If you're, a, if, if you're on a yeah, YouTube, you can see we actually have the design of it. I feel like we need to look more naughty, though. This is like a little nice. Oh, we've got what some you, naughty. What are you going to do with those? What's the plan? 
Well, well, we're saying this could be the things that you put on your butt. Photo booth or heads in a stick and they sent us like an extra three. So we just have these next to us. Remember where we have to sit. Or if you get mad at us, you could like Those eat are it. great photo. Or if you, like, yeah, yeah. You could fight them. Her partner sent a picture of us in the bed while we were away. Someone stole one from a booth at a trade show. We asked for it. <laughs> oh. They could have it. Okay. And we're like, can I, it was, it was, uh, yeah. He was like, he was hanging out. He wanted out with to them. have it. He's like, can I have these? There were, because we had so many. I only Our ordered three, but they gave us like six. Because I, I, but I ordered them an Etsy for this, uh, our book promotion. So people are like, are you worried about what he's going to do with it? And like, we don't give a fuck. No, and then yeah. he's like, can I have these? And he was so excited. He put them in his backpack. Yeah. And, and someone's like, do you know what he's going to do with that? I'm like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, do do what like you do. It's a cardboard cutout yeah. head. So I love that butt plug. Like, you're like, I'm in everybody's butt. That is so, awesome. Okay. Can, can I, wait, can oh, I, yes, wait yes. the thing with their face, this just made me think of a story somebody told me. The thing with your face, I was talking to somebody who started having conversations. They weren't meeting in person. They lived long distance, but they were having conversations on DMs via Instagram. Flirting's getting heavy. And the person was actually famous who's messaging them. And so it's just like, so, and it's kind of like, they can't fuck in person, you know, it's, so it's just like flirting, which led to voice message recordings and stuff like that. And eventually the guy is like, can I have a picture of you? And she's like, she's a performer. She's like, yeah, of course you can have a picture. And he's like, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to mail me a picture of you, but it has to be laminated. She's like, what? And it turns out he has a collection of pictures of women's faces that he comes on. And if they're laminated, he just wipes (laughs) it right off and he can do it like no, over and over again, over and over again. He refused to laminate it. He, got he could really laminate it himself. Never speak to her yeah. again. <laughs> oh my god! It's part of the process. So yeah, that might be what that guy's doing. That or maybe he laminated. Those are, we, are cardboard. They're they're what not laminated. Are stuck in lamination for life. Oh god. No. Oh, all right. All right. Um, bringing it back to any, anyways. Um, the Patreon. Part oh, the Patreon. <laughs> yes, the butt plug club <laughs> circle. Oh, that was good. Good way to bring it back around. Good job. Oh yeah. But, um, so anything else we should know about the butt plug club? Oh. Did uh, yeah, people can. So this is yeah, my sense yeah. of humor. I mean, uh, there are people who are going to be guests on your podcast who are going to go, let's be very serious. It's sex. And then there's me who's going to go, I have a butt plug club. You could put a butt plug of my face in your asshole and we could get on zoom and have a conversation about whatever you got butt plug in, got your earbuds in. Let's have a conversation. Let's just have a frank conversation. Tell each other stories. It amuses the shit out of me. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh so just, the idea of just somebody walking around with a butt plug in. People do it all the time at my shit. They come and they put a butt plug in and they're just like enjoying the extra level of the story. Like, oh, I really. Mm. Oh, oh, I love that story. Oh, you know. So I just love the idea that people can have this personal experience with me by putting me in their butt. Yes. And then we can just sit and tell each other stories from our lives. Because they can literally sit on your face. Yeah. They can literally, face. literally, literally, literally sit, sit on, on your my face. face. Consensually. Um, uh, and just adding to that, um, someone that April and I both know, I won't say her name, but she used to work at Pure Pleasure. She was terrified of the dentist. This is on the butt plug oh, note. Yeah. And so she would get one of the, um, we have it at purepleasureshop.com, the pretty plugs. There's like the Savarsky, Savar, Savarsky, Savarsky crystal, crystal at the, yeah. at, on the end. Oh, yeah. And it's and also stainless steel. She'd wear, and they're beautiful. She'd wear that to the dentist and it would help her get over all the like grindy, picky like stuff. Because she'd just think, I have a butt plug in. They don't know. I have a butt plug in. They don't know. And just focus on the butt plug. Smart. There you go. And now y'all can Another do it with Dixie's face. Dance. Oh my God. Do it with my face. Yeah. I love that. How do I, they, okay. So how, I had oh, a, sorry, go. Okay. Hang on. Uh, a riff off of that. We're going to do this because it's story. It's story. It's just yeah, it's jumping around. I had a friend who used to go to job interviews and she would feel insecure and she would feel like they're not going to hire me. I don't have the skills. So she made special panties that she had embroidered fuck off on the butt. So she always wore her fuck off panties to job interviews because it made her feel powerful. I need those when I'm out in public around a bunch of men. Mm -hmm. I love men, but you know, sometimes I feel that way. Fuck off. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. Ooh. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I you got you. You were not interrupting. No, this is awesome. This is so that. many ideas. One time I was in a I got a ticket on a <laughs> I got a ticket on a wave runner for not wearing a life jacket because I used to rent boats out when I was like 14 to 21. Boats and wave runners, jet skis as people call them, but jet skis are stand up. These are sit down. Okay. It's not the eighties anymore. <laughs> so that bringing it back though, uh, I got a ticket from a, from a cop in Wisconsin on a uh, police um, vessel. And it was a lame ticket. Cause I was really close to the dock. Anyway, I went to court to, to get it 
off of my record and I was 16. And so the guy that was in front of me was had like 17 different um, violations and he had a fuck off tattoo on his neck. <laughs> and I'll never forget. I was like, that guy's totally going to prison, right? Because he's like, he looks like he had 17 like, for doing some gnarly shit, like drunk driving, all this other stuff. And I was like, he just has fuck off on his neck, like really big on the, under his ear. That's why you hide it on underwear. Right. Yes. I was like, yeah. that was a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no. You're just saying like, fuck off. Yeah. So that just reminds me of that. Or like tattoo it on like your ass or something. This is <laughs> the most rambling, shameless sex yeah. you have to ever. <laughs> is it though? Is it? <laughs> uh, All right, so we have so your Patreon. So yeah, how yeah. do you find your Patreon? That's what I was going to ask you. Is it Dixie oh. Delator? No, it is Body B A W D Y. It's the yeah. only one I could find the short name for. It, so it's patreon.com slash body. Oh, and, perfect. Um, yeah, I Patreon is how I produce live shows. There were mm -hmm. no live shows for what, three years for? So my Patreon is how I stayed alive. I'm so grateful for my Patreon supporters. I try and give them things like the recordings, the live shows. People are like, hey, I want to see your Chicago show. And I'm like, that lives on my Patreon. Like those people got me to the place. I wouldn't still be here if it mm -hmm. weren't for them. So I usually put that stuff over there for them rather than go, maybe one day I'll do that. But right now I feel like my Patreon supporters are the people who kept me alive and I want to thank them. And then your new tour, you have a yeah. tour. Sorry, if you were going to add that. Exact same thing. So, you how, are doing live shows. Will you tell more about the upcoming live shows that you have? We're in August 2024. The dates of those, how people can buy tickets, mm -hmm. uh, where you're going to be, and then if they want to work with you or find you in general. And we'll have sure. all the links in our yeah. show notes, everyone, if you can't remember all of this. But let's yeah, you can remember all of this. We're not going to yeah. give you any links. Good luck <laughs> finding me. Um, I'm a show producer. I'm going to put the links in there. So <laughs> I am about to go on tour. First show is going to be September 6th. That's going to be in Chicago. I haven't been to Chicago since right before the pandemic. My Chicago community is just ravenous. I love them so much. And I'm going to this big, beautiful venue that's where all the famous comedians perform. So I'm really excited about the venue. Uh, it's called the venue. It's called the Heath Main Stage at the Den. Ooh. Um, and so what I'm going to be doing in each city that I go to is I'm going to be doing a live show and then right afterwards, like, you know, do a show on Friday. And then if that's a Friday show, then on Sunday, I'll be teaching an all day storytelling intensive called how to be body Dixie's secret system for uncensored storytelling. So I'll teach you the formula to take any of the rambling sex stories because it's, it's a very emotional story and you never get to tell it. So you never had. So it's just a whole day of telling dirty stories to a bunch of people who are cool. And on the Lord's Day, by the, the way, the Lord's Day. Sunday. Oh, on the Lord's Day makes it even better. Doesn't it? <laughs> Except if you're Jewish, the Lord's Day is uh, Shabbat, which oh, is Saturday. Well, it's a nice yeah. long weekend for the Lord. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of, of breaking the rules and doing some evil on the Lord's Day. I was forced to go to church when I was a kid. And now it's like, how can I mess shit up on a Sunday? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I will be teaching all day storytelling in the city. So I am coming to Chicago. I'll be doing a special event for first person arts running their sex files show for the first time. Uh, and that's going to be in Philadelphia. Then I do Portland, Seattle, Boston, working on Austin. So each one of those cities will have an all day workshop or a live show. And the live shows are recorded. And that's what you can hear on my podcast. Recordings of people getting on stage for the first time in front of hundreds of people and sharing their really beautifully told intimate stories because I work with everybody who gets on my stage to make their story beautiful. And you also do coaching. You do one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if you do one-on-two, one-on-three, but you do coaching and you have the podcast and the shows and the website. So just another reminder for us and our listeners, um, it's body and B-A-W, that's body. Bodystorytelling.com is where is people you live. You'll find everything yeah. there. Okay. Oh, yes. Hi. Amazing. Thank you, Dixie. You are so cool. But stuff, y'all. That was really fun. We did we did go on some tangents. And I think that that was part of the fun because it doesn't always have to be about specific sex stories or 
specific fuck off underwear or butt plugs in your butt. Uh, this is anal August, everyone. And check out Dixie's work. If you aren't going to be in Chicago or one of the cities that she's going to be performing in, support her Patreon. This is how folks make money. I know at times can be tough. However, we have to support the arts and uh, crafts, but and not really just crafts. Re- and you just reminded me, I'm sorry, I am teaching an online workshop, How to oh. Be Body 2. That one starts September 16th. Oh, right. it's most of the way full. So hopefully some of your listeners can be part of that because you just get to sit there in your own house and tell filthy stories. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Put your earbuds on. Send the kids out. And <laughs> <booyah>. <laughs> then we're good. Got your well, earbuds in. Get your earbuds in. I love that. I love your Southern accent. It's, it makes me feel right at home. Although I'm Midwestern. doesn't matter. But I love a Southern accent. I'm like, can you get me some sweet tea? I love it. Bless love your heart. Except, mm-hmm. <laughs> except we really know what bless your heart means, okay? We oh, do okay. know what bless your heart means. <laughs> Means. Yeah, yeah. Anyone doesn't know, uh, email Dixie. She'll let you know. Okay. One thing we didn't say, Dixie, and I know you mentioned this earlier before we were on the call. You said this month of August is, I think you said, is it Fat Awareness Month? Fat is Liberation that Month. Fat Liberation Month. You know, I, I've always been fat and I gained a bunch of weight during the pandemic. And sometimes you get in your head and you just feel like maybe you're not right for the world. You know, you get in that place. And one thing I've been doing lately is I have started going to all these fat positive events. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I have started going to a thing called the Fat Swim every Sunday where everybody in the pool, you can't get in the pool unless you're fat. And everybody's just like, your suit's cute. You walk out just like, walking on air because you feel so good about yourself. You don't feel like you're wrong. You feel so right. They have fat people hiking. They have all these beach days where you can go. And it's just like, I love the empowerment of fat positive act, you know, these, these communities, they really, we're, we've been told maybe we're not, you know, quite as good as other people. I leave feeling like I'm better than anybody in the world. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll challenge you. Yeah. 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 As, yeah. It's, uh, hopefully there's more communities than just San Francisco that offer that because yeah. that's really, that's really rad. I love that. Yeah. There's a uh, chunky dunks is what they're called. Dunks. Yeah, oh, chunky cool. dunks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. August, the month of anal August and chunky dunks, celebration, <laughs> liberation, and all the Asians. Loving there yourself. You Loving I did not yourself. say Asians. I said Asians. <laughs> Asians. <laughs> Don't get oh, mad at me for that. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> I was like, whoa. Didn't no, I know. No, no. Holiday. No. Okay. So, uh, well, again, thank you for like sharing that. that info, too. I think people that listen to us uh, that will appreciate more info is uh, information is key to liberation, to uh, bringing yourself to the next level. Storytelling is part of that. This was uh, such an incredible episode. Time spent with you, Dixie. So thank you. Uh, And to all of our listeners out there, thank you for being part of the Shameless Sex Revolution. If you're not following us, I think Amy mentioned a few times, we are Shadow Band on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, We keep it pretty PG. Uh, So follow us. If you can't find us, you can either look for April Lampert or Amy Amy Shameless Shameless Sex. Sex. So we are thankful for that. Follow us on your favorite podcast app if you want to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> we release a new, well, follow us and review us y'all. Okay. And remember that our sponsors are what keeps us alive. We have a book as well that can feed us eventually. Ah, so if you haven't your bought your book, book, Oh my God. Go your ahead. And sex. Anywhere the books book. are sold. You can also buy the audible version and uh, we will get some money from that eventually. But right now we just have it as a resource for you. And this podcast is free. So your review is how you can give us the gratitude. Uh, and if you hate us, then go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> with with the Dixie Dylan tour butt plug. Yeah. Just kidding. Go listen to someone else. Just go listen to someone okay. else. Uh, but we still will love you because uh, we're all about karma, y'all. All right. We'll see you next Tuesday, every single Tuesday. Haven't missed one yet in what? Seven plus years, Miss Amy. Ever. Yeah. Good huh. job. I know. All right, y'all. Ciao for now. To learn more, go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.